We are very privileged to have with us Professor Dr. M. V. Padma Srivastav, Head, Neurosciences Center, Ames, Delhi. A Padma Shri awardee, Dr. Srivastav is known for pioneering acute stroke program, Code Red, a medical initiative for supporting patients afflicted with epilepsy and stroke, incorporating hyperacute reperfusion strategies, including thrombolysis program. I would request Dr. Srivastav to please explain the current scenario of stroke in India. Please welcome Dr. Padma Srivastav. A round of applause for Dr. Srivastav, please. Thank you. Good morning, um, Sri uh, Athavale ji, our Honorable Union Minister for Social Justice and Empowerment, and uh, Professor Jairaj Pandian, the Vice President of World Stroke Organization, uh, Dr. Vinit Suri, who is the current President of Indian Stroke Association, uh, and uh, Professor Mahendirata, the Director of Janakpuri and past President of Indian Stroke Association, my friends and comrades in the fight stroke endeavor for this country, ladies and gentlemen. So what I would be talking today is not new to the stroke community amongst ourselves. We probably are in this dialogue almost every single moment of our you know, lives when we are breathing and we are awake. But it would be an eye opener to in those, the friends who are from the media, as well as from the ministry and others some of those things would be eye-opener. A lot of it has already been covered by Kamal and all, you know, by, uh, and some of it I know you are already aware of. So just taking it forward that, so especially for you, we probably need some, you know, solutions which are small and inocentric and we as a country, we are known to be, you know, jugard savvy, isn't it? We probably need some kind of those because the problems are pretty big. So a lot of you would be aware, especially the media, that there have been this recent publications from the Indian Council of Medical Research, from the Ministry of Health, from the Public Health Foundation of India, along with the, uh, you know, the world, the health metrics from Washington, D.C., who brought out this publication, this was in November 2017 in Lancet, which actually talked about the paradigm shift of what the country is facing over a period of 26 years. So what has been in the year 1990 to what's been in the 2016 is a whopping sea change. So there's a big shift from what was considered to be irrelevant in India, which included heart attacks, brain attacks, cancer, COPD, and what have you they've actually taken a major chunk out of the whole health burden in the country. And when you're looking at the northeastern states, ladies and gentlemen, stroke is the number one cause of death. It's overtaken ischemic heart disease, tuberculosis, and a whole lot of other things which are most of us would be aware of. And these are the seven states, eight states in fact now, are afflicted with stroke as a number one cause of death over and above heart attacks and cancer and everything else happening in this world, in our country. And even if you take the rest of the country, stroke is number two, right after ischemic heart disease. From the media, how many of you knew this, that this was happening in this country? Please give me an honest answer. I don't think you knew this. So there has been a sea change in the, the status of the health burden and the state-wise disease burden in our own nation. And we've really not been aware of it. And this publication was year 2017. And the quantum change has also been mapped out. And something at number 12 has gone up to number 5, which is more than 100% percentage of change as far as the cerebrovascular disorders are concerned. So we now have a dual challenge. We are hit with a double whammy. We continue to grapple with our air pollutions, our potable water. We continue to have these, you know, every time we have epidemics of some variety of encephalitis and, you know, tuberculosis, what have you. And we also have this growing burden of the non-communicable disorders of which stroke is it has a staggering, staggering, humongous stats when you look at it. 
it's already been mentioned that we have one stroke every 20 seconds, one stroke every you know, two minutes, and that's just not it. We also have a fatality, which is pretty big, and the daily is lost, which the Honorable Minister would also be interested in, that this is the biggest cause of disability that we have in the country. We are not talking of road traffic accidents. As a disease, which is the one which is causing the biggest disability in this country, it is stroke. And we'll have Professor Jairaj, who's been a champion against this, who will be talking to us in the next uh, you know, uh, few slides. And the strokes are not happening to someone else. They're not happening to people who are old. They're happening to young people. We have a lot of literature. We have our own literature, which has been published from you know, our aims as well. Almost one-fourth of all strokes are happening in people who are younger than 40, 45 years of age, and that's us. So it could be the next person could be one of us, it could be one of our loved ones. So until we actually get out our act together and do something about it, we could be the next victim. So let's take the case study, this I borrowed from Jairaj, my good friend. So he's, and purposefully I put this middle age up there because get out of this concept that the strokes are happening to people who are 70 and 80 years old, right? So you have a 50 year old, he's a wealthy businessman, he's living in Delhi, he has an acute onset of hemiparesis, which is the most recognizable form of stroke. He recognizes it, the family knows it, rushes it into a tertiary care hospital. It's a well-oiled machinery of stroke management which is available there. He gets the clot-busting drugs stat. Everything is just the way the doctor ordered. So he improves in 48 hours and he is fully independent. He's been what he was before the stroke had happened. That's a success story, and all of you would be aware, and you agree with me that that's happening. But then you also have an even younger person who's just about 50 kilometers away from Delhi. He's a shopkeeper. Life is going on. Suddenly has a right hemiparesis. He doesn't have a conveyance, has a local taxi, go to the district hospital. The CT scan doesn't function, or there is no CT scan there, which remains a workhorse for stroke management. He's then told to go to a private hospital, goes there, gets a CT, spends a, a lot of money, comes back to district hospital. It's well over 20 hours. And then he's told, nothing we can do. He's told to be a good boy, stop smoking, take aspirin, go home. So he goes home with right hemiplegia. There's no one to look after. The wife looks after him. The son drops out of his 10th standard and looks after the shop. Isn't this a common story, please? I'm asking the media here. Yes or no? No, well, that's a reality. And that's still happening all around us. There was a question asked to me once when I took up these proposals, went to the Ministry of Health, do the, the DGHS as well and said, look, we need to tweak our stroke program. And they said, what is it that is not being done now that you need to do? Well, this is the reality. Strokes do improve. They improve 1% or they may improve 100%. That's what we need to do. We need them to improve as much as possible. We need to prevent disability. And what is the basic tenet in that? Time is brain. So you have such huge advances in stroke management now. In six minutes flat, you have these advances in neuroimaging, whether it's the CT-based or MR-based, you know if it is a stroke, it's a stroke mimic, what kind of stroke? Is it because a clot is there? It is a blood vessel which is blocked or a blood vessel which is ruptured? Which vessel is blocked? Can you open it by giving intravenous? Do you have to go into the vessel and take it out? What are the chances of recovery? What are the chance of a recurrence of stroke? What is going to be the outcome and disability? All this information you're going to get in six minutes flat. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going all around us. You need to get this information, you need to get this management percolated to the deepest recesses across the social, economic, geographic barriers across the country. Wouldn't that be the mandate of all of us as responsible citizens? Ayushman Bharat, we are all part of it. We are all part of the people who have to deliver that, right? So. This is part of the, you know, the advances we have. We have an angiography. We have all this available all around us. We probably have 200 MR machines in Delhi alone, and Delhi and NCR. So the guidelines as they exist, you have the only FDA approved and the DCJ approved drug for an acute ischemic stroke, which is the commonest cause of stroke where there's a vessel which is blocked. You unblock it. It's no brainer. You need a plumbing jog there. But that is the only FDA-approved treatment for this. Carries with it a level one evidence. The earlier you treat, the better it is, because time is brain. 
time lost, brain is gone. If you think you have all the money in the world, that you can be airlifted and go anywhere, no. The brain is extremely unforgiving. You need that treatment there stat. And that carries with it a greater recommendation. The regimen is there. As trocologists, all of us are, we, are no, we know about it. And for Minister Saab, we also have our, the India-centric drug, which is also approved by DCGI. So two varieties of the clot lysing drugs which are there. And there are these, you know, humongous number of guidelines which have been done. But the most important thing is time remains the biggest factor, which is within which the patient needs to come to you. Once they come to you, you need to react in time. You have to be stroke ready. So you need more hospitals which are stroke ready. So the interventions which have in fact taken this paradigm shift from one of nihilism, from one of saying, okay, he's a 70 year old man, has a hemiplegia, so what? So let's pray to God, feed him aspirin, control his blood pressure. If he's smoking, stop smoking. Now that's the end of the story, no way. So the ones which have moved, you know, are kind of thinking from that of nothing can be done to an aggressive more where irrespective of what time the patient has come to you, that you make a difference. Get him back into useful member, integrate back into the social fabric of a society is what the stroke management is all about today. Ladies and gentlemen, the stroke care pathways have changed. It's time that we get reali we realize about that. And the interventions which have actually contributed to that is a management of a patient in a stroke unit, which is, again, it's no rocket science. It's dedicated people who know what's happening, deal with it, and deal with those early complications, prevent them. Everything else, but I guess thrombolysis is essentially the game changer in getting your acute stroke quiet pathways. A lot of it has happened now. We can take the clot out. We have gadgets to do that. And that is being done all around us. And what's happening in the real world, even in India, we have the hub and spoke models, which are available, wherein you start the treatment, get on to a central station where you can complete the process of the stroke care pathway. Now, I'm not getting into a lot of it. One thing which we are India-centric is that when these guidelines had come, they said that you need these cochlation parameters, you know, to be there with us within that narrow time window period of three hours, which was simply impossible in India. So even in the year 2005, we didn't wait for it. We went around it. We published this data. And now, you know, in the international guidelines, you don't need to get those coagulation parameters to instill. So India had been some kind of a pioneer even for the work you know, stroke care pathways even internationally. So this is, you know, a, a little about uh, the current status of what's happening within India. There is still a delayed arrival, as someone said, that if people don't know about stroke. And, I, and let me tell this to media. Still the media says heart stroke and a brain stroke, there's nothing like a heart stroke. Stroke is stroke, stroke is brain. There's a heart attack and a brain attack. The lack of awareness of therapeutic options and of course the stroke ready hospitals and economic affordability is something where we're trying to get these packages into Ayushman to make it more affordable across India. The lot of treatment gaps in India which have already been mapped out and this is something which I've taken again, Jairaj had published this, that in the year 2016 with a 1.2 billion population, you actually have 40,000 people who need thrombolysis, and of which what is happening. Across India, if you're mapping it, this is what is there. Yes, Delhi NCR has almost 5% of thrombolysis data, but there are states where probably they have not even heard about even now. And though thrombolysis rates have gone exponentially after the role of Indian Stroke Association, after the role of several other, you know, the stroke, you know, champions who've been working, but still a whole lot of, you know, the ground needs to be covered. So the, the enormous burden of stroke where India is a prototype of the, the low and middle income countries, we share a lot of common risk factors. Yes, they cause heart attacks, they cause kidney disease, but the management differs. The management paradigms have to come in parallel. They need to be there just like you have CCUs and management of heart attacks and your STEMI programs and your golden hour for trauma. Stroke needs to get integrated into it. And the you know, pre-hospital issues, awareness, and emergency ambulance services, it beats me. Delhi still doesn't have an ambulance service nationalized. 
but there are a lot of states which is functional and so therefore you know that's that's a that's a really an optimistic way of looking at it that we're going to get more states into that but how do you bridge this gap and how many neurologists are there 2300 and probably we'll be going but then for 1.3 billion populations of again there's no brainer that stroke is not going to be managed by neurologists alone you need stroke physicians so we have got into the act we did develop certain monkey proof standard operating protocols trained the emergency personnel at district level and we mapped out those factors even when a patient reaches an emergency what is happening in the triad system why is there a delay and we looked at that that yes patient doesn't know yes patient doesn't come in time you have transport blues you don't have an ambulance system but then even after they reach an emergency door there is still a whole lot which is desired upon including big tertiary care hospitals like all in institute of medical sciences so appropriate triage in ED itself is an important, ex extremely important thing. We mapped out how you decrease the door to therapeutic you know, window periods. And uh, in Himachal, we took up this in the year 2014. And 10 districts in Himachal Pradesh, ladies and gentlemen, have a district hospital which has a functioning CT scan. Train the emergency personnel of those. This was a top-down approach from the Chief Secretary Health of Himachal Pradesh. We trained them and we used a very simple WhatsApp model which we call the Telestroke, which is totally cost-free. And this is how you transmit. There's a checklist like flying the plane. Is this there? Is it present? What's a BP? See the WhatsApp image. And we started thrombolysis by a remote control. And we published this already in 2016 it's a successful model and this ladies and gentlemen is free of cost for the state of Himachal Pradesh thanks to both the state as well as the central NPCDCS program this has also been published in the International Journal of Stroke from India as the low cost stroke model and all the components of the stroke unit care have been mapped out and this has also been replicated in the states of Punjab where Jairaj and Dheeraj have been the architects for Punjab, taken to Tamil Nadu, to Rajasthan, to Uttar Pradesh. Professor Daya Sagar is sitting here, who's a physician who's actually involved in this program. He'll be talking about it. This is, ladies and gentlemen, a running program. But then we are looking at six states, seven states, Kerala, probably eight states. We have to go beyond that. How do we do that? So we've mapped out what can be done at a primary, secondary, and a tertiary level. Almost everything can be done even at a secondary level. Your primary stroke care pathway, till you come to you know, getting into the artery and taking the clot out, everything can be done at a district level. All you need is a workhorse, which is a plain CT scan, and a know-how, and a trained physician, and the attitude to deal with those patients. It's at the primary health center level, a wellness clinic, that you have the prevention model and the awareness model. So. In the NPCDS program, we took up this program in Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh. We had a lot of awareness issues which went on. At that time, NCD mission directors. But then, it, it's, uh, you know, it's a work in progress. That's all I could say. Stroke units turn chaos into order. This is something which definitely is, which is possible, plausible, and we push for it. Mobile stroke units, Jairaj, myself, and we, we were all involved in that. From the Indian Council of Medical Research, there are two of them which have been you know, sanctioned for the northeast part of India. That's again a work in progress. Lot of risk factor screening, part of awareness, lot of stroke apps have been developed. You have Dr. Mohan here who's, who would be talking about the stroke app. And probably we will have a grand entry into the World Stroke Organization soon. Vinit would do that. And so we have, even Himachal has a stroke app. Dheeraj has a great stroke app, which is, which has been sanctioned, and he probably has already one going on. And the rehabilitation. This is the last part of my talk. You can have a case study. You know this. This 62-year-old man, he's had a right hemiparesis. So he wasn't home then, you know, he started to walk with support. He was discharged like it happens. You can't keep these patients forever. There's no rehab at home. So what happens? He develops stiffness, contractures. 
because there's no way you can get a disabled patient back to the hospital every single time. Rehab is extremely expensive. It's 400 rupees per hour, which you're aware of. How do you get this done? Rehab is a huge issue, isn't it? So we've got amalgamation of holistic medicines, Indian systems of medicine into this camo, which is by systems which are much more accessible, available, affordable, and more importantly, that is what the community is also happy to do with. So you have the both Ayurveda, you have homeopathy, more importantly, the, the system of getting them back into a disability-free mode. So we are amalgamating systems into it. In this process, we have a lot of studies which are ongoing with Departments of Science and Technology and the ICMR. We've done pilot studies or even on stem cells. I think that's another area where India has actually almost pioneered. We've had stem cells, we have stem cell facilities in, the, in AIMS, and these are our studies, both mesenchymal stem cells, monologous, you know, the, the mononuclear stem cells. And this is one of those, you know, the functional MRI scans, which actually shows that before stem cells and after stem cells, this is a visual analog to, you know, get you that impact. High-end science, which includes the diffusion tensor imaging and mapping out the tracks, and I'm not talking out of my hat. This is, these are all published strategies. There are a lot of questions for stem cells, but then that's something also that India has almost pioneered in. And there are a lot of non-invasive brain stimulation techniques, all this, with our, the IITs, which are also there within, in our own country, this, this, is, this is something which we have with IIT Delhi. There's something which would happen with IIT Mumbai. So these are the exoskeletons, which are very, very expensive outside. They call, they actually are almost to the tune of two and a half crores. And we are getting, we've developed this exoskeleton for 350 rupees. So that's the kind of, that's what I'm, talking about as Jugaad. You know, you can use your science, your brains, and make them India-centric, and this is a censored glove, which is also being developed now. So all this, essentially, ladies and gentlemen, never ever give up on your stroke patient. There's a whole lot of ground to be covered. And all of us, whether we are stroke people, neurologists, physicians, we are stroke nurses, we are stroke rehab people, and prevention, media, ministry, IHW. Now you are a new partner into us. I'm so happy to listen to what Kamal was saying. So all of us have this as a goal to make India stroke ready and probably ultimately makes India stroke free. Thank you.